Action, uh, the article's entered. I now recognize Ms. Green for five minutes from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry. In 2021, Georgia had one of the highest number of cases per capita that were reported through trafficking hotlines. Uh, the northern area of Atlanta is, is well known. It's one of the highest places of, of human trafficking, human sex trafficking of women and children. Women and girls represent approximately 71% of all trafficking victims globally. More than 90% of detected female victims are trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Approximately one-third of all human trafficking victims are children. This sentence, this next sentence uh, is, is hard to even read because it, it's our country. The United States is one of the top destinations for human trafficking and is among the largest consumers of child sex. The average age of entry into the commercial sex market is 12 years old. In the past few weeks, there has been a lot of controversy of, about a movie called Sound of Freedom. And um, I, I can't understand why anyone would say anything negative about a movie that's trying to expose uh, child sex trafficking, especially when it involves our United States border. Um, uh, Ms. Vaughn, can you tell me, is it a conspiracy theory? Is child sex trafficking a conspiracy theory? It is most certainly not a conspiracy theory. Um, it, it occurs far too much. I have um, met with and hugged survivors and heard what they have gone through, and to refer to it as a conspiracy is an insult to what they have endured. Is our border a serious issue, the, the fact that our border is open and the amount of people coming across our border, is that contributing to child sex trafficking? It is most definitely contributing to the problem of not only child sex trafficking, but um, forced labor and domestic servitude and debt bondage as we've discussed today. Is our uh, current administration's border policies contributing to child sex trafficking? They are certainly facilitating it, yes. So it's happening with more frequency as a result of the loose policies at the border and the lack of enforcement, frankly, in the interior of the country as well that would help rescue some of these survivors and or at least turn them into survivors as opposed to victims. Thank you, Ms. Vaughn. Um, fentanyl deaths are at an all-time high. 300 Americans dying every single day from fentanyl. Uh, having a, a top government official on the Mexican cartel's payroll help the cartels operate with impunity, moving tons of drugs around the world um, and, and make billions. It costs the cartels as little as 10 cents to produce a fentanyl-laced fake prescription pill. 10 cents. And that is sold in the United States for as much as 10 to $30 per pill. Uh, uh, Mr. Maltz, with your experience um, in your career in the DEA, uh, is, is the amount of fentanyl coming across our border, is, is this an all-time high? Yes. I mean, this is the greatest drug threat we've ever faced in the history of the country. But I want to add that it's really not a drug. It's a chemical weapon coming out of China, just like the K2, the spice, now the xylazine that is rotting people from the inside out. This is deliberate, in my opinion, my expert opinion from all the years of doing this. I lived this nightmare starting in about 2008, and then fentanyl started coming in around 2012. This is deliberate, and I would say, based on my experience, it's like, just like the Afghans used to say, selling heroin to the West is a jihad against America. Well, for China, they're undermining, they're, they're destroying our country, and they're sitting back using the Mexican cartels to do the dirty work. I, I agree with you, Mr. Maltz, and, and I believe, and, and I would ask your opinion as well, with the Biden administration's policies allowing the Mexican cartels to traffic the amount of poison fentanyl that's coming across China, it seems to be, um, it's not negligence. It, it's not that they don't know it's happening. They know it's happening. It's hard to deny 300 Americans dying every single day from fentanyl, but, but would you agree that the Biden administration's policies 
is helping the Mexican cartels traffic this Chinese poison fentanyl into the United States of America. Absolutely. I mean, you look at this little boy, three years old from Kentucky, and this is his mother in the coffin here with the kid because of fentanyl. And it's happening every day all over the country. I deal with the families, I know, and that's really sad. And it's very sad that the current administration overturned strong homeland security policies that kept us all safe. That's my passion. I mean, I can't believe this is happening to this great country. I agree with you, Mr. Maltz. It seems that border security should be our utmost uh, important issue that we're working on, not only to stop child sex trafficking, human trafficking, but also to prevent the poison of 300 Americans a day. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you. Gentlelady yields. I now recognize uh, Mr. Garcia for five minutes.